afternoon class. Uh, my name is Paco Pi, and uh, today we are going to talk about uh, diuretics. So welcome to Pharmacology Made Simple for Nursing Students. Today we're looking at diuretics. And uh, when we talk about diuretics, principally we are referring to drugs that works within the nephron. We are referring to drugs that works within the nephron. And this drug aims at uh, uh, sometimes increasing solute and water uh, secretion or excretion. So the drug that I'm going to talk about will increase sodium and uh, sodium excretion. And when sodium is excreted, sometimes it goes along with what water. So diuretic principally refers to drug that works within the nephron and they work by enhancing excretion of sodium and other electrolytes. And when sodium is excreted from the body, water follows. And this drug is able to help in diverse forms of uh, diseases. We can use diuretics to manage someone suffering from hypertension, or if someone has edema, we can use diuretics to manage those conditions. So that's what we are going to look at for today. So typically, this is a typical drawing of a nephron on the board. And uh, if you know your nephron very well, the part, we have five basic parts or so of the nephron, apart from the Bowman capsules. We have the proximal tubule, then we have the descending leg of the loop of Henle, then we have the thick ascending leg of the loop of Henle, we have the distal cumulated tubules, then we have what, the collecting tubules. So this is a typical diagram of a nephron. And the diuretic that we are going to talk about works within the various parts of the nephron. So we are going to deal with the diuretic and you know which diuretic work at which parts of the body and what they are either preventing the body from reabsorbing or what they are enhancing their excretion. So we have five classes of diuretics. We have five main classes of diuretics. I mean five main classes of diuretics. We have what we call the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. So the first class I will talk about will be carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. Then I will go ahead and talk about the loop diuretics. The loop diuretics. Then after the loop diuretics, the third one I will talk about will be the tyrosine. Tyzide and the tyzide like diuretics. So, tyzide and the tyzide like diuretics. Then I will talk about the potassium sparing diuretics. The potassium sparing diuretics. Then, the last diuretic that I will talk about or I will discuss will be what we call the osmotic, osmotic diuretics. The osmotic diuretics. So these are the five classes of diuretics that I will be discussing today. We have the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. We have the loop diuretics. We have the tyzide diuretics. We have the potassium sparing diuretics. And we have the osmotic diuretics. And all these diuretics are at different parts of the nephron. So as I said, we are going to look at the diuretics, which parts of the nephron that they are working and uh, what we use this diuretic to treat. Which condition do we mostly use this diuretic to treat? All right. So as I said, the nephrons, we have five parts. We have the plasma tubule. We have the descending leg of the loop of Henle. We have the thick ascending leg of the loop of Henle. We have the distal convoluted tubule. We have the collecting tubules. So, and the diuretics will act at these different parts of the body. Okay. As you recall from your physiology class, we you know that about 99% of the filtrates, about 99% of the filtrates that are delivered at the Bowman capsule or to the nephrons are what reabsorb. This means that at each point in time within the nephron, certain electrolytes are reabsorbed back into the blood. And once the electrolyte goes back into the blood, what is going to happen? It will still come back again because the body mostly needs those electrolytes to function. So about 99% of the electrolyte that comes into the Bowman capsule or comes to the nephron are mostly what reabsorbed back into the system. 
Okay, so with that said and done, the first diuretic that I'll be talking about is what we call the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. The first diuretic that I will be talking about today is what we call the carbonic, carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. This is the first class of diuretics that I am going to talk about today, the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. Okay, with the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, someone will ask, where do they act within the nephrons? I said the diuretics will act at different parts of the nephrons. So as we are starting with the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, someone will ask, where are these drugs going to work? The carbonic anhydrase inhibitors work within the proximal tubule. So when we give the drug to the patient, the drug is going to work within, let's say, the proximal tubule. Because we have the proximal tubule before we come to what the descending limb of the loop of Henry, then we come to what, the ascending limb of the loop of Henry. So the, pro, the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors work within the proximal tubule. Proximal tubule. The next question is, uh, what is the mechanism of action of this drug? So I'm going to tell you about the mechanism of action of this agent right away. Okay, but first thing first, let me just tell you before I will show you how these drugs are going to work. The carbonic anhydrase inhibitors uh, prevent the reabsorption. They prevent the reabsorption, reabsorption of uh, bicarbonate ion. So the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors prevent the reabsorption of bicarbonate ion at the plasma table. So that means that uh, what this drug is going to do is that this drug is going to prevent the reabsorption of bicarbonate. By in preventing the reabsorption of bicarbonate, you also lose sodium alongside. So some books will say they block the reabsorption of sodium and bicarbonate ions at the plasma tubule. So carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, where are they acting? They are acting at the plasma convoluted tubule. What is their mechanism of action? This drug prevents the reabsorption of bicarbonate and what sodium at the plasma tubule. So what happens is that if you prevent the reabsorption of bicarbonate and sodium, then you are going to lose bicarbonate and we also lose sodium alongside. Now let's zoom into details with the mechanism of action of this agent. Let's talk about some of the mechanism of action of this agent. All right, so in the next video, we'll talk much about the mechanism of action of this video.